What's up guys, it's your boy Jordan back with another e-commerce video and in this video I just wanted to quickly go over something that I know is really important that I just realized a lot of you guys may not know or may not be implementing currently. So I was working with a close friend of mine who had reached out to me and he's actually trying to start his own e-commerce business and he had launched his first batch of ads and I was asking him some questions about his ad performance. I said, how's this metric doing? How's this metric doing? And it turns out he didn't even have the proper metrics being displayed in his ads manager. So at a glance, he was unable to tell if his ad was performing good or not good at all. And I feel like there are a lot of people who have this because this is not the first time I've encountered this. So the reason why I wanted to make this video is because I've seen it a few times. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the best columns to set up for your e-commerce campaigns so you know exactly what to be looking for and you'll easily be able to say this ad is doing well this ad is not doing that well so if you guys are interested in e-commerce and growing your business click the link in the description below to join my free Facebook group I'm always in there answering questions and I'm happy to help you guys out but without further ado let's get right into the video At the end of the day, this is all about personal preference. If you like to look at certain metrics to determine if an ad is doing well or not doing well, that's up to you. But these metrics are pretty universal when it comes to e-commerce and they're among the best indicators if your ad is succeeding or it is not doing so well. So I'm gonna go into this document real quickly and I'm gonna break down the most important ones in my opinion and then I'm gonna open up my ads manager and show you guys how I have it laid out with actual stats in play so you can kind of see how my mind works when I'm looking at these campaigns. So if you've seen my Facebook ad blueprint video, this might be a little repetitive, but I know a lot of you guys haven't sat through that video and I really recommend you do. But the first and most important stat that I noticed a lot of people don't even have activated is ROAS, which simply stands for return on ad spend. And what that's basically saying is you spent $5 on your ads, you made $20 on your store, your return on ad spend will be four times. It's a pretty simple metric and it is one of the biggest indicators if your ad is doing well or not doing so well. If you have an ROAS of one, your ad's probably not doing that well, but if you're rocking three, four, five plus, then it's a likely chance that you're making profit on that ad set itself. A Couple other important metrics to look at, CPC link click. Um, I noticed when I was looking at my friends in particular, he had the CPC enabled, but it was the regular CPC. And what this does is this is gonna give you false hope that your ad may be performing better than it actually is. The regular CPC metric is simply stating that somebody saw your ad on their feed and they put their finger on their phone or they just clicked on the ad on their computer. That doesn't mean that they've clicked through to your store and actually started browsing the product page itself. You're definitely gonna wanna have the CPC link enabled. Two more important metrics, then I'll just go ahead and show you guys the whole thing. I'll even put it all up so you can screenshot it. CPM is a important metric, but it is not one that you need to worry about all too much. And what I mean by this is that if your ad set is extremely profitable, but you have a $15, $20 CPM, it's okay, you can keep running the ad set. But I always like to keep my CPM up because it shows me how relevant my ad is, how competitive the audience that I'm targeting is, and overall, how many people are going to be see it, seeing it for the money that I put in. Um, a good CPM, and I'm not gonna go through the best stats in this video, go look at the blueprint video for that. A good CPM would probably be anywhere from 15 and below. But like I said, guys, if you got something with a $20 CPM, but you're getting an eight times ROAS or some other good number, don't kill it just because the CPM's high. I definitely recommend keeping the CPM enabled, but don't look at it as the end all be all. Um, let's see. Lastly, I would say an important stat to have is CTR link. And this is sort of the same reason as the CPC. You guys want to see how much you're spending and how high of a percentage you're converting on the people actually coming to your store. 
So for a good CTR link, you want to have it around 1.5 to 2%. And you'll see in my campaigns, it's actually a little bit lower than that. But I'm simply running a lot of traffic. So it's to be expected that it's a little bit lower. But yeah, let me just jump into my ads manager and I'll show you guys the breakdown of exactly which columns to have. But I hope those four helped you guys because I know this is beginner stuff, but a lot of people don't know even what to look at when they're scanning through their campaigns. So this is exactly how I have my um, campaign set up. And this is the stats for the month. And you can see here at a glance, guys, I can see how many people my ads reached, how many purchases I've got, how much I spent for that purchase, how much I've made, my return on ad spend, cost per purchase. It's basically the perfect layout for an e-commerce entrepreneur because you can see all the important metrics that you want to see. So I have it called uh, My Stats and it's really easy to customize these columns guys. You just click on this little columns button. You go to customize columns and my computer's froze. <laughs> but um, there it goes. So you can see here um, you guys can screenshot this, pause the video here, copy this down. This is pretty much all of the columns that you need to have activated if you're launching e-commerce campaigns. There really aren't that many other ones that need to go into this. And before I had, I'll show you guys my old columns. They were very unorganized. Um, I had like everything. I had the content views, the add to cards, the checkouts. It's, it's quite similar to this. But what I'm saying is less is more here. You want to have the important stats so you're not clouding your vision with all this other stuff. Like you might see this CTR and think, oh, this is incredible, but this is the CTR all. You know, this is the stat that really matters. So what I'm saying is that it's important to have the important stats and not fill up your columns with every stats because then it's going to be much harder for you to stay focused and organized when it comes to these campaigns. And I just accidentally gave away all my products so that's gonna be blurred <laughs> but um yeah guys that is the columns that I'm working with and I'll pull those back up so you can see we'll go up to customize columns again and it's frozen again but yeah so there are the columns there take a screenshot copy and paste but those are the best columns that you should have for your e-commerce campaigns I know this was a relatively simple video but for the people who don't have the proper column set up, this video is going to be immensely valuable and extremely helpful. So if you did get some value out of this video, leave me a like and I will definitely appreciate that. Also, leave me a comment on some other video ideas that you want to see. And like I said in the beginning of the video, join my free Facebook group if you have any questions or are looking for any extra advice. It's a lot of awesome people in that group. Anyways, guys. I know this was a quick video, but thank you guys for watching it. I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.